So you can see I'm surrounded here with some of, but not all of my various resistance band systems that I've reviewed on this channel. Some of which I've yet to even show you like this crazy thing here from Switzerland that was sent to me. Thought I would do somewhat of a answer to some very common questions, again, regarding resistance band training. And these are pretty much unbiased in the sense that yes, I do affiliate codes with these guys and I do like these systems, although I just wanna talk about them, but I'm not the hugest resistance band aficionado or fan. I don't consider myself a resistance band expert, despite I think having the most amount of reviews of these types of products. But I think I can give some sort of insight, somewhat an unbiased sense of from someone who's not training solely with these systems despite having so many of them. So I wanted to comment on the various bar band, foot plate systems, handle based systems, uh, just purely using loop style bands or tube style bands by themselves or with some sort of attachment point, let alone the other kind of knockoff versions. And basically to answer some questions of how different or how unique are these systems from each other? Do I have any personal preference versus one another? Would I recommend one versus another? And all this to say, because I think this resistance band trend continues to rise, almost maybe I'm sure there's a saturating point at some point, because to me, I've honestly got a little bit jaded, you know, reviewing so many of these things to almost revert back to just something very basic and primitive, like a pipe and some uh, bands that like you guys have seen me talk about on this channel. A lot of content, a lot of stuff here. I'll put some other videos and links down below as well as promo code in case you're curious. But to start off this video, I wanna talk about one system in particular, Clench Fitness, which is a great affiliate. Those guys are awesome. They're making a brand new product, the Nexus Bar. You guys have been asking me since it was kind of uh, revealed. They got a pre-order up, which you guys can, again, save some 50% uh, off that if you guys check the promo code on that bar. They're gonna send it to me for review, so I'll give you guys a full review on that. But what's interesting about that is that evolution that I kind of saw coming. I'm not gonna say it was my idea. I knew they had a bar coming. I had something similar going through my brain. There's a product you guys will see in the future. I don't wanna take the limelight off their Nexus bar right now, but they're using a four foot bar, and which I actually bought a few, about a month ago, I was sitting in the corner of my garage. I was gonna show you guys a video about how much great exercise and stuff you could do with a four foot bar, because I love these dimensions, and they basically made the best of both worlds. They put a four foot bar with a unique carabiner patented, uh, pending carabiner clip system, hook system on the end. So. If you have a preference towards a certain resist resistance strength curve, you wanna take advantage of free weights and or resistance bands, now you can do that. I love that it's USA made, so I wanted to shout out to that because I know that's something you guys are asking about that definitely looks really cool. And if you guys didn't know about it, now you know. So with that out there, continuing on to just talking about my general thoughts about, say, the barbell foot plate systems, which has been my personal favorite, how I personally came to fall in love, back in love, I should say, with resistance bands because it wasn't something that I was a huge fan of before. Dabbled in a lot of different stuff. You guys told me to check out the X3, and then of course that involved into the Harambe, and there was some, you know, like the Vector Athletics Easy Curl Bar was another kind of evolution of that. Uh, if you have this thing here, I'll get to in a second to keep alluding to. But I love these hook-based bars, or these basic barbell band setups, because it allows you to lift a little more heavy weight than I personally was used to using with resistance bands. It also really connects you, I think, to, to the ground and just the way the tension kind of comes off when using a foot plate versus standing on the bands themselves. Granted, I think you can still do that. I think it's a little overblown to say that you can't do that. Of course you could. There's tons of systems out there that came before this where you're just standing on bands. I think bands are pretty resilient in their own right. But it's just, I would say, if you haven't tried it, standing on a foot plate definitely works. And you guys know, uh, I kind of even gone as far as like just recommending basic pipes of course, I sell Shameless Plug foot plates, made a brand new one, this low rider board that is crazy low to the ground. I prefer using a foot plate is my point if I'm gonna use resistance bands, but even on this one, notice the, the gap isn't super wide. I personally don't really go super heavy. I'm not really doing any of my leg stuff anymore, uh, despite showing some really cool products like this Vector Athletics uh, squat belt and even the recent squat harness. I just prefer to do legs on something else, which will kind of lead me to some final thoughts about how I feel about resistance bands versus free weights here in a second. One of the big things and necessities of having a foot plate is that it really allows you to handle its heavy loads for deadlifts or squats. And then there's some crazy, you know, thick bands nowadays that uh, for my foot plate, the newest one I made cannot handle that. But if you guys are going super heavy and want to challenge your lower body with some crazy loads, that would be something you need a heavier, denser foot plate. And that's kind of why they cost so much money. But honestly, that might not be for you. And that's the case with me. The biggest band, and I've said this in, a, I think, one or two past videos, is I personally love this type of dimension, a kind of a smaller band. And that's why I kind of made that low rider board and I kind of use a smaller foot plate, is I just tend to either stack bands like this 
are you something about this tension? Because I, I like the repetition range, I like the stimulus it gives off, and I'm honestly not using bands as my sole form of resistance training. They usually are used in one or two exercises in a given workout, but that might not be for you. If that is the case and you're not going super heavy, you don't intend to go super heavy, especially say in the lower body, then you probably don't need these systems or you need to spend that much money on them because they can be very expensive. Of course, there are some you know, knockoff ones that are pretty decent for just using lighter bands and are fine. But you can get away with just using handles. Of course, Clench makes a certain handle that I think is unique and very versatile. I'm not the biggest fan of this one because I just think it takes a little more time to set up. And for me, for resistance bands, that's why I like resistance bands and why I use them, or I should say why I fell in love with loop style bands is they're easy to kind of set up. There are things like this Robus one, these simple handle systems that are good, but they can't handle heavy weights. But the beauty of these, is, like I said, if you're not going super heavy, you don't need a foot plate, which leads to another question people ask a lot, which is why do you even need a foot plate? Why do you need bars? You don't even need handles. You could simply just use the loop style bands by themselves, say with gloves. Because Under Sun Fitness really hit a gold mine, especially with their marketing was dead on. James Green is an awesome a salesman, still is an awesome salesman. I do think he was using resistance bands. I don't think he even said it was a sole form of training. It could have been, I don't know, but my point is, uh, he basically marketed a very simplistic product and showed all the benefits alongside a great workout program that he actually put together, but just using simple bands and a pair of gloves. And that's a good case of just saying, yeah, you can get great results with bands without any of this extra stuff and just buying some loop style bands. And that would be probably one of the first recommendations I'd have for most people if you think about kind of getting into this and seeing if all this extra stuff is necessary because it can kind of get overkill. And like I said at the start, it starts to feel all kind of the same, and more or less, just depends on the certain you know, comfort levels and what your preferences are. But if you're just using bands for single joint stuff, uh, you wanna test the waters, I think just getting a simple loop style based system is fine because it's not as say cumbersome, don't set things up like on a wall mount, like with the tube style bands. Um, you also, probably for most people's exercise, isn't gonna be that big a deal for your hands. You simply just buy a pair of gloves. And by and large, I think despite what some companies say, these bands are pretty resistant. I don't think these are the, like the highest, highest quality bands, but I had my original orange ones for a long period of time. I wore them out, I had them outside during like the tense summer heat. They were a bunch, get a bunch of chips and nicks. They're on like the pavement and they held up pretty good. They eventually did break, but that they should have broke a long time ago. But I think these things are pretty resilient for what they are. Talking about like the tube style bands, we start talking about like, I think Body Elastics, I've reviewed them. I actually sold mine because I just wasn't using them. Those are very popular, one of the most popular ones. And then I would even think the X bar was very popular. And that, both those actually sell an easy curl bar uh, function. And those are another example, just simple tube based banding sold a lot. Those things sold a lot. I know that X bar I since, I since was sold off. Body Elastics has a great new machine that's coming out. I'll talk about that probably in the future. But uh, tube based bands are an option for me. I just find that they're a little bit more cumbersome to kind of use, take a little more time. Of course, you have to kind of stand on them, at least if you want to use that easy curl bar. Uh, and you just can't go as heavy. But if you're not going to go super heavy, and I'd say also finding a band that's less likely to have any risk of snapping, like the Body Elastics has their kind of a patent pending, some sort of like anti snap thing going on, um, those bands are another great option. But I will say this resistance band revolution uh, seems to be kicking high gear for a lot of people. Again, I wouldn't throw myself in that camp because I'm not using them as a standalone, but this was sent to me. This is no affiliation, no promotion whatsoever. This was just sent to me from a individual out, Pascal, out in uh, Switzerland in this box a few months ago. I feel guilty for not talking about it sooner, but he put together this crazy apparatus. It's got wheels. This is kind of like the X3 on steroids. It's got like rollers. It's a little bit over, you know, overbuilt for my personal taste, and I did use it a little bit, but I'll show you guys some pictures of how to use it. it comes with a really detailed book. I just wanted to showcase this because this was pretty impressive what he put together, but he has a whole system put together where you can do band squats, belt squats, has these handles involved with it. He even kind of gave me this uh, kind of modified, you know, chopped in a little piece here. Uh, easy curl bar where you can just assume you can just wrap the bar around this and do some curls, which I, I like that because I like the simplicity of just using this. So having and tried all these different things, I think all this to say that unless you're going super heavy and you really trying to challenge yourself in the lower body department, I think when it comes to any of these systems, I think you can more or less get the same job done for whatever price point you're kind of wanting to look at. It gets down to kind of personal preference, especially when it comes to like barbells and comfort. And of course there's a safety measure of like, you know, can a certain barbell say for instance, hold up a given amount of tension. 
But personally, I, d I think for where accounts, you have to really assess as far as what's the best system for you and should you even try this. I would start more on the cheaper side, even just a simple pair of like loop style or a set of loop style bands and just try it out and see if you guys can stick to it. Cause personally, I've kind of gone full circle where I was just using these for a few workouts, got really super crazy and trying different things. I'm not saying I won't go back to some of these exercises, but I've gone back to just using very simple, smaller bands like this uh, for just for a few key exercises that I really like. So what I really recommend these systems as a standalone system, I think you for sure can. I know a lot of you guys love it because it is so simple and because it is so versatile and doesn't take up a lot of space. I totally get that versus all this equipment in here. But if you do have all this extra equipment or if you can afford or want to throw in say a sliding bench trainer, some adjustable dumbbells, squat rack, barbell, whatever. To me, it kind of makes sense to at least experiment and try other things that might feel better or at least mix things up a bit so you're not so bored doing the exact same thing. Because I will say, and I've said this many times, there are some inherent limitations to using any of these systems. There's gonna be some weak points as there with any machine. So why not take advantage of other pieces to then maybe not worry about those weak points that some of these machines might be presenting to you or devices, whatever. That's my kind of two cents about it, guys. My point is I would start simple, start basic, see what you're gonna use, see what you'll stick to long-term, and then why not add a few other pieces there to help supplement what you're using. If you guys have any specific questions about any of this stuff here, let me know. And especially most importantly, if you guys are using any of these things, I know I can't cover everything here, drop a comment down below in the comment section. Let us know what you guys think about it, and I'll see you guys on the next video.